Mr. President, the Fox News Channel is very happy to see you. Good to see you. And uh, on behalf of the News Channel, let me wish you, Michelle, Sasha and Malia, a very happy and joyous 2009 holiday season. That's so nice. I appreciate it. To the Fox family, let me say the same. You have a job summit next month. Mm -hmm. You want a jobs bill in 2010. Will that jobs bill raise the deficit or will you demand that it be deficit neutral? You know, our first job was to get the economy to recover. And we're now seeing that. We've seen economic growth. We anticipate economic growth next quarter as well. I always said that job growth would lag behind economic growth. The question now is how can we accelerate it? There may be some ways that we can accelerate it without spending money. For example, one of the keys to this Asia trip is to start promoting the notion of balanced growth where the U.S. is an exporter again. You know, this is uh, a region where right now we're sending about 25, 26 percent of our exports. If we just boosted our share of exports by 1 percent, that might be 250,000 well-paying jobs in the United States. So uh, export promotion would be an example of something that we could do without spending money. Uh, there may be some uh, tax provisions that can encourage businesses to hire sooner rather than sitting on the sidelines. So we're taking a look at those. Um, I think it is important though to recognize that if we keep on adding to the debt, even in the midst of this recovery, that at some point uh, people could lose confidence in the U.S. economy in a way that could actually lead to a double dip recession. And so one of the trickiest things that we're doing right now is to uh, on the one hand, make sure that the recovery is supported and not withdraw a lot of money either with tax increases or big spending cuts. And states, for example, need a lot of support to keep hiring teachers and so forth. At the same time, making sure that we're setting up a pathway long term for def deficit reduction. It's about as hard as a pl of a play as, as there is, but it's what we have to do. And whatever jobs, additional jobs legislation comes out has to fit into that broader framework. Does it raise the deficit or does it not? Well, uh, the... Or you haven't made you up know, your mind on We that. haven't seen that, and, and that's part of the reason why I think we want to take a look at this summit. David Obey said yesterday that uh, erroneous estimates from the administration on the job-creating power of the stimulus bill, and I'm quoting now, are outrageous, and the administration owes itself, the Congress, and every American a commitment to work night and day to correct these ludicrous mistakes. Your reaction? Look, I understand David Obey's uh, frustration. I think that... Uh, we made a decision very early on on the biggest stimulus package in history. And every economic model that we looked at at the time said that if you start economic growth, that unemployment will cap out at a certain rate. Now, there's no doubt that unemployment has been worse than any of the economic models that, that, that occurred at the time. But his criticism isn't about the job creating. Right. It's just about what you have said about the job creating. Well, have there been mistakes and do they need to be corrected? No, look, I think this is an inexact science. We're talking about a multi-trillion dollar economy that went through the worst economic crisis since 1933. The first measure of success of the economic recovery is, did we pull ourselves back from the brink? We did. Have we gotten economic growth going again? We have. The question now is, can we make sure that we're accelerating job growth? That's my number one job. Nobody's been more disappointed than I have to see how high the unemployment rate has gotten. And I spend every waking hour when I'm talking to my economic team about how we're going to put people back to work. It's this going to be it, the estimate thing. This is a side issue. Do you support or oppose GM using bailout funds for its overseas operations, specifically Opal? Uh, what I have said is that we are not going to meddle in GM's decisions. They now owe the U.S. government money. We are a shareholder, but we're not an active shareholder. We have specifically said that we're not in the business of running a car company. We want to make sure that you did not have the collapse of the U.S. auto industry in the midst of a very fragile economic situation, but we want to get out of that business as soon as possible. I was pleased to see that GM thinks it may be able to repay uh, some of the U.S. government loans sooner than it anticipated. That's something we'd encourage. In the meantime, we're not being involved. Uh, we're not getting involved in day-to-day -day management. Just a couple on health care. Mm -hmm. Dick Durbin said the new deadline for signing legislation is now State of the Union. Mm -hmm. Why is that delay acceptable to you, and how upset are you about it? You know, I want this done as soon as possible, and I think the American people do. We've had a long debate, uh, but you know, there's a reason why health care hasn't been reformed in. 
40, 50, 70 years. Uh, it is a big, complicated piece of business, and you know, frankly, Congress is not accustomed lately to doing big, complicated pieces of business like this. Uh, we are pushing and prodding as, as hard as we can. I do think that a lot of the delay has been that uh, the Congressional Budget Office, which uh, scores or determines how much things cost, how much they might save, they've been overloaded and it's taking a lot longer uh, for us to get that and I think it's entirely appropriate for legislators to say we want to make sure we get final numbers on any piece of legislation before we actually vote on it. So the end of the year that's gone? Uh, well no I, I haven't given up on it. I, we're going to keep on pushing as hard as we can to make that happen. Will you sign legislation on health care that includes the Stupac language? You know I think that there is a balance to be achieved that is consistent with the Hyde Amendment, what existed before uh, we reformed health care. Uh, I believe in the basic idea that f federal dollars shouldn't pay for abortions, but I also think that we shouldn't restrict uh, women's choices. And so uh, I think there are some negotiations going on, not just uh, uh, on the Democratic side, but I think uh, among people who are uh, of goodwill on both sides to see if we can arrive at something that meets that criteria and I'm confident we can do that. Yes or no, does the Stupac language strike that balance? Not yet. Well, how much will you miss the deadline to quote, close Guantanamo by the expiration of an executive order and mm -hmm. how disappointed are you in that? You know, I'm not disappointed. I, I knew this was going to be hard. Um, it, it, it's hard not only because of the politics, right? People, I think, understandably are fearful after a lot of years uh, uh, where they were told that uh, Guantanamo was critical to keeping terrorists out. Uh, so I understood that that had to be processed. But it's also just technically hard because of the fact that... Harder than you thought it would be? Um, no, as hard. Uh, I just think, as usual in Washington, things move slower than I anticipated. Um, one of the things that we knew very early on, uh, there are a set of uh, detainees in Guantanamo that can be convicted, and they will be convicted. There are a set of detainees that uh, can be deported and, and sent to other countries, and they will be. There's a set of detainees, though, that uh, are dangerous to the United States, uh, but unfortunately evidence against them may be tainted. Figuring out how to deal with them always was going to be difficult. Uh, and we are on a path and a process where I would anticipate that Guantanamo will be closed next year. Uh, I'm not going to uh, set a exact date because a lot of this is also going to depend on cooperation from Congress. We will have part two of Major's interview later in this broadcast.